Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update and Spain's handling of the coronavirus pandemic is in the spotlight with a senior health official currently under investigation, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your name here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, Spain's handling of the coronavirus pandemic for the last year and a half in the spotlight. And the face of the pandemic here in Spain, Fernando Simon, is being investigated. As we can see here, a court is investigating Fernando Simon for the management of the pandemic. The 13th Court of Instruction of Madrid has agreed to open proceedings against the director of the Center for the Coordination of Emergencies and Health Alerts, Fernando Simon, to investigate whether there was prevarication in the management of the coronavirus pandemic. This was agreed in an order following the complaint filed by the Association Abogados Cristianos against Fernando Simon and against the President of the Government, Pedro Sánchez, the Ministers Irene Montero, Margarito Robles and Fernando Grande Malasca, and against the former Vice Presidents of the Executive, Carmen Calvo and Pablo Iglesias, and the former ministers, Jose Luis Abalos and Salvador Illa. However, the judge only opened proceedings against Fernando Simon because he is the only one who is not legally protected and because the procedural situation of the people who were legally protected at the time the complaint was filed in the Supreme Court has already been resolved by the Supreme Court. So a Christian Lawyers Association trying to get various members of the government past and present into court to judge them for their handling of the coronavirus pandemic here in Spain. However, they all have legal impunity because of their position in government, and the only one who can be taken to court is Fernando Simon. So we'll see how this one plays out, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Now, Europe's vaccination campaign took a new twist yesterday, when Italy became the first Western country to impose vaccination for all workers. Italy is already the first country in the Western world to require its citizens to be vaccinated in order to go to work, or provide services at home, whether in the private or public sector. In reality, employees will have to have their green certificate in order, which basically proves immunization through vaccination or a negative test within the last two days. This option, however, is not feasible for daily use for professional purposes. So the government's impositions are more of a technical formula aimed at convincing the population to get vaccinated and put an end to the resistance once and for all. Italy was already a pioneer in Europe when it introduced compulsory vaccination for health workers last April. A few weeks ago, it went a step further and made the use of the COVID certificate compulsory for teachers as well. So there we go, huge news coming out of Italy, the first Western country to impose a COVID certificate for all workers. And I'm sure other countries around Europe and the world will soon follow Italy's lead. And as the text says, the reason Italy has done this is to end resistance to vaccination for once and for all. Now, if you're in the Canary Islands, you have probably noticed a bit of seismic activity recently. And get ready, because there is a high probability that a volcano is about to explode. And as we can see here, experts indicate that it is possible to predict the eruption of Cumbre Vieja and that it will have its first explosive phase. The Canary Islands are trembling again because of a possible volcanic eruption. Experts have assured that it could be immediate and the authorities have decreed a yellow alert on the island of La Palma after registering more than 4,500 earthquakes in the last few days, the last one at 3.30 a.m. this morning. The strongest one occurred yesterday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and had a magnitude of 3.2, so the locals are already prepared in case they have to leave their houses quickly. The inhabitants of La Palma say that they are a little uncertain and nervous and have already prepared their cars so they can leave at any moment, as they don't know where the volcano might come out. So residents on that island down there in the Canary Islands, La Palma, waiting with their cars packed in case they need to escape an erupting volcano. But experts are confident that they will be given plenty of warning and will be able to get out safely. But still pretty scary nonetheless, if you ask me. Now, there was some more bad news for Spain yesterday when it comes to education, and the country has again been highlighted in an OECD report. And it is that Spain is the OECD country with the highest number of repeaters in high school. Spain is once again failing in some key educational indicators. It leads the OECD in the repetition rate, while the endemic problem of school failure deepens, and so does the number of knee knees 
young people who neither study nor work, according to the latest report of the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. In our country, 8.7% of students in the first stage of high school education and 7.9% in the second stage had repeated in 2019, when the averages in the organisation were 1.9% and 3% respectively. The problem, as in other countries, affects boys more than girls, with boys accounting for 60% of repeaters in lower secondary education (ESO) and 56% in upper secondary education (baccalaureate and VET), compared to 61% and 57% in the OECD. Migrants and vulnerable pupils also suffer more from this phenomenon. So Spain once again performing poorly when it comes to education, and with the highest high school repetition rate in the OECD. And this is a problem that starts at high school and then leads to more problems down the line, like for example the problem of knee knees as we saw in the article, young people that don't study or work. Now continuing on the topic of education here in Spain, there's been a controversial story dominating headlines for most of the week. And it's the story about the Junta de Extremadura and the teachers who refused to teach two young girls without masks in a school in Cáceres. The two sisters at the Alba Plata school in Cáceres, whose parents refused to allow them to wear masks in class, will finally be banned from entering the school without this protective measure, so that if they do not accept the rule, they will receive educational attention from home. This does not mean, as explained by the Secretary General for Education, Francisco Javier Amaya, that they will receive telematic classes instead of face-to-face -face classes, but rather that outside school hours they will be provided with the homework done by their classmates. So a controversial story, as I said, the story of two young girls in Cáceres who have been banned from primary school because their parents won't let them attend school wearing a mask. Other parents at the school kicked up a fuss and said that they don't want their children mixing with the two girls, and teachers at the school have also refused to teach the two young girls unless they wear a mask. And the latest on this story is that the girls' parents could be prosecuted for not sending their kids to school. So we'll keep an eye on this one. Now the Madrid Premier, Isabel Diaz Ayuso, seems to be riding cloud nine at the moment. And yesterday she was treated like a rock star when she turned up at a university. As we can see from this headline, Ayuso gets emotional after being received Britney Spears style at a private university. Thursday morning gave Isabel Diaz Ayuso a reason to reaffirm her self-esteem. In the style of Britney Spears, she herself described the reception she received from students at the CEU San Pablo University during her visit to the center, confessing to be excited to be welcomed like a pop queen. It is not usual. More than one politician has been scolded by their forays into university territory. The president of Madrid has been luckier. There has been a fuss here at the door, she commented, satisfied that there had been a fuss, but a good fuss for her. In fact, there was applause and shouts of Viva Uso and Viva España from several students who were waiting for her at the center a private religious university. So Ayuso treated like a pop star at a private religious university in Madrid. And as the article said, a positive foray into university territory for a politician here in Spain because they normally get eggs thrown at them. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation here in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence rate is now below the 100 mark and is sitting at 96. However, there are still 3,947 people with COVID hospitalized around the country and there are 1,058 COVID patients unfortunately still in ICU. Now with electricity prices going through the roof here in Spain in recent times, a lot of people are looking for alternative energy sources, for example solar, but are solar panels really profitable? It could take up to 10 years to recover the investment. Newly built homes in Spain are required by law to install solar panels, a measure that is becoming increasingly important in the face of rising electricity prices but how much do we really save on average with them? Solar panels are a way of reducing electricity bills. We pay less for the electricity we consume, but the profitability is noticeable in the long term. The average solar installation of photovoltaic panels for a house is around 5,000 euros. The savings on the electricity bill depend, among other factors, on the area in which they are installed. For example, in Andalusia, there are more hours of sunshine than in Asturias. But as a general rule, these panels will save between 40 and 50% on the price of electricity. With these data, we will need between 7 and 10 years to amortize the investment. So there we go, up to 10 years to recover the investment of putting solar panels on the roof. And I'm sure that has answered the question that a lot of people here in Spain that are considering putting solar panels on the roof have been asking. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from David, I live in Murcia, in a small village on the outside of Abanilla. 
My Correo's office in Avenia is a brilliant office. No queue. More than two know me by my first name. Always very pleasant. Yeah, David, thanks for the comment and thanks for telling us about your positive experience with the postal system here in Spain. No queues and the people that work there know you by your first name and they're always very pleasant. And here in Madrid, it is the complete opposite. There are always queues at my local post office. The people working there have no idea who I am and you've got to be extremely lucky if they even crack a smile. But I guess that's the difference between big city living and village life here in Spain. One here from Wickler Walker, you're back indoors. Has the weather taken a turn? Here in Ireland, it was 18 degrees Celsius and we were all in shorts. Yeah, Wickler, thanks for the comment, and the weather did take a bit of a turn earlier in the week. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the weather was quite bad, raining quite heavily in this part of Spain. Today, it's a lovely sunny day, but I have an annoying neighbor behind me who's doing renovation works at the moment, and it's very, very loud. So better to avoid that annoying background noise. And I was speaking to somebody in Dublin earlier in the week, and he told me that the weather was fantastic. So good to see that you are out and about, enjoying the good weather there in Ireland with your shorts on. Just be careful that you don't burn your legs. One here from Robert, just a comment about the US stadium attendance. Places like Michigan had 106,000 fans at the college football game Saturday then 65,000 at the Ford Field for the NFL. The US vaccination rate stays around 50%. Wait a couple of weeks and then see what happens with the Delta variant in places like this. Either the US is right or Canada Europe are right about masks, limits and distancing. But we both can't be right. Stay tuned. Yeah, Robert, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to a comment that we saw the other day from somebody that said that they were surprised by the huge crowds at football games in the United States given the current health situation there. In England, they also have a similar strategy. There are no restrictions on crowds there, no social distancing, and you don't have to wear a mask. But here in Spain, as I mentioned the other day, there are limits. I think it's a 60% limit at football games. People have to wear masks, social distancing also, and you can't eat or drink inside the stadium. So different ways of dealing with the pandemic now after 18 months, the United States way, as you mentioned there, a virtual free for all, and other countries like Canada and European countries that are a little bit more conservative. And don't worry, I will stay tuned to see what happens. One here from Paul, you referred to a bloke. What is a bloke? Please discuss. Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment. Bloke is a word that we use in Australia and in some other English speaking countries to refer to a man. For example, look at that bloke over there. He's a bit strange, or well, he's a nice bloke, isn't he? In fact, in Australia, you will hear this word used all the time. And to be honest, I had no idea that it was not common in North America, which is where I imagine you are from. One here from Gaz, Madrid is a good city if you like blistering heat and freezing cold winters. Yeah, Gaz, thanks for the comment, and you pretty much summed up what the weather is like here in Madrid. Three months of summer and nine months of winter. Summers are usually very hot and uncomfortable, but winters aren't that cold if you compare them to some of the northern European countries or North America, for example. Last winter was a bit of an exception because we had a severe snowstorm, but that doesn't normally happen. And winters are cold, but as I said, they're not that cold. One here from Ivan. Thank you, Stu. Agree with Barcelona and Madrid being great cities to live in, but what about salaries? Those are not that great. Yvonne, thanks for the comment and this comment and the previous comment referring to a story that we saw the other day that Madrid and Barcelona are in the top cities in the world to live in according to Time Out magazine. And you're right, low salaries for a lot of people are one of the main obstacles when it comes to living in either Madrid or Barcelona. But again, it depends which sector you are working in. There are some sectors at the moment that do pay reasonable salaries. The IT industry apparently pays quite well, but for a lot of other sectors, salaries are quite low if you compare them to other European countries, for example. But that's Spain, and you have to take the good with the bad. And finally, one here from Jimmy. Come on, people, let's start a petition to bring back the table plant. Yeah, Jimmy, thanks for the comment, but I have no idea what you are talking about. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.